Yes, we can. Okay, okay. Thank you. All right, so um, as the moderator rightly introduces, uh, I'll be speaking on basic introduction to artificial intelligence. Um, but it raised an interesting question, which maybe I'll just take like one or two minutes to, to quickly talk about. It's not quite captured in my presentation. So before I forget, let me just quickly say it. Um, yeah, the, the artificial intelligence, like you rightly said, is, um, is sweeping across all, all um, studies and all walks of life right now. And so many people, so many fields are um, definitely affected. And so I, I want to answer by saying that um, in this artificial intelligence, we, we can group the participants in artificial intelligence into like three, four classes. And the first class will be what many people will, will know about. And those are the developers. So the developers consist those that code, those that um, maybe they write in Python, in, um, in JavaScript, those that design interfaces, those that design a website where you are interacting with, uh, with a chatbot or um, those that code up a, um, a recommendation system, maybe on YouTube that you are watching or on Jumia when you want to buy out, I mean, when you want to, when you want to buy an item and all sorts of things. Those are the, uh, those are the developers. And also we have researchers also part of the developers because they research into new ways of doing this um, AI thing. And then um, the coders code it up and developers develop it onto the, um, the final end user. Now we also have, um, we also have the policy right we have the policy makers so the policy makers are people that are looking at um like the moderator also rightly said stuff like um security stuff like privacy how how is this ai thing affecting our privacy how is it affecting um uh, our geolog uh, our geopolitical differences our cultural heritage is it preserving it or is it blurring the line right and also we have what is called ai ethics so um, issues of ethics, like um, probably, um, yeah, they, they still go into privacy, but ethics go beyond that. For instance, um, a while ago, before now, uh, I, a little bit for uh, around now, right now, um, it is quite difficult for um, for a facial recognition system, that's an AI system that can recognize face, to recognize black faces, I mean, African faces or black American faces compared to white faces, you know, and um, it is AI ethics that begin to question this. Why is it so? How comes that um, that a, a black face is easily recognized and I mean, a white face is easily recognized and black faces are not, you know, so issues of ethics become to i mean begin to come in you know also they have this 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 issue in the in the united states where um whenever um whenever an ai system that's ai system that's controlling traffic flag off a black american or a black person you know the kind of interrogation is going to be giving them is suspicious as if this person has committed is a crime compared to if the person were to be a white. So we have all of these um, biases all around, but AI ethics are the things that is controlling and bringing it down. And so if you look at AI ethics now, you can begin to think about like, uh, like political science coming to, into the case, uh, law coming to the case, uh, and so many other other fields, you know, all of them come into artificial intelligence in this. I mean, in this in this era. Um, also, we have the user, right? Uh, of course, you, you have the use you, the the users are the ones that we kind of understand what 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 is what is the effect of this AI on the use on the user group, right? On the on the geopolitical. Um, um, soon or and stuff like that and you know this is where marketing comes to i mean you are in marketing you are in finance this is where it all comes in now um apart from saying all of this as to how it how ai is developed i can also begin to tell you how ai is affecting all of these subfields but so i will not take um completely all the day just telling you about ai let me just go and be guided by this i um the, the goal of this is to really tell you 
what AI is and uh, and that it is not a far-fetched thing, right? If we are um, physically present, or maybe I can, I would have loved to ask you that, what is your view of AI? What do you think AI is, right? Um, but I don't know, can I have one or two people to just tell me, what do you think AI is? Um, personally, what do you think it is? Um, what do you think artificial intelligence is? Anybody? Anybody? I hope you can hear me, though. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. All right. So if if um if I if I didn't get any rest, okay. Somebody raise up. Is uh is it a is or her? I mean, at Taiwo, right? Please go ahead. Yes, sir. A machine sent to human being. Okay, a machine that um, that resemble or that mimic human yeah. being. Yeah, represent, represent human that represent being. Represent human being. Okay, good. Yes, yeah, that, that represent human being. Good. Okay, any other person? Yes. Um, please go ahead. I see somebody raised up his hand right now. Go ahead. Okay, I think I saw somebody that raised up his hand. Person has pulled it down. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you for um, for that. So, um, our thinking of AI really, uh, it falls into four categories. We can think of AI uh, as a machine or, or an algorithm or a software that, that think humanly. That means that think the same way human being we think and all we, we can say it is a machine algorithm or software that behave that act like human being right so it, um, in, in this left hand side you begin that what we are thinking about is actually a system um a system that is human being like completely human being right but um that is if we if if we assume that human being are um, uh, are completely um, intelligent, then that, that will solve it. But then um, sometimes human beings behave foolishly and some of the actions that we take are irrational. So we don't want an irrational system, rather so people can, I mean, it is also possible to see AI as, uh, as a system, a machine, a, um, a software or an algorithm that think rationally or that act rationally. All right. So when we are saying um, an human-like system, then we, we are kind of simulating human intellect and behavior by a machine. So we're thinking of a, a, a machine that can solve mathematical problems, right? We're thinking of um, a, a system that can do common sense reasoning, like um, that, that, that can probably even give you a legal prank or that can crack joke with you and stuff like that. Also, we are thinking of expert knowledge, like uh, lawyers, medicine, that can run diagnoses and all of that. And somehow we are also thinking of a, a machine that can make a blend of social behavior that is not just going to, for instance, we have, um, we have cars that drive themselves currently. And <clears throat> in driving, you know, driving is just beyond mounting the car, put your hand on steering, Put your leg on, um, on on the pedal and start firing. You know it's beyond that because you have to not only behave rationally. You have to think about your relationship and how it affects others. You know you have to think about the cars that is coming be behind you or beside you. You have to think about. You have to kind of predict what the other driver is going to do. And this is kind of yeah, social behavior. So when we are thinking of human like, we're thinking of. A machine that can solve mathematical problems, a machine that has common sense reasoning, that is, I mean, that can serve as um, domain experts, like serve in place of the person, and um, a system that that is capable of behaving socially. Um, um, but I, I, on the other hand, we also can define artificial intelligence as uh, rational thinking, that it is a machine that think rationally and that way we, we, we just basically think about the goals what is the goal that this machine is supposed to achieve so take for instance um 
many of you, I believe many of you are on Facebook, if not on Facebook, then on any of the social media. And um, you, you, you probably will have wondered how this machine is, I mean, how Facebook is able to suggest your friend or predict what you like and uh, uh, yeah, some other social media like that. Who do you want to follow and, and the likes? So they have a goal. The goal is that they want you to interact with others. So that is what they are driving towards. So all the friends they are suggesting for you is to make you also interact with other people. If you are on a um, on Amazon, for instance, or AliExpress, or even Jumia, you know, as you want to buy a product, it is suggesting for you another product. The idea is that they want you to buy. So, and also when we are thinking about irrational agents um, or irrational uh, machine, then we also must have a way of measuring the performance. So we have a way of measuring the performance as well. Okay. So um, then we can also think about um, the thought process. Can a machine think? You know, that's that's an interesting question of a very long time ago, you know. And then um, what about the behavior, you know? and stuff like that so this this is an interesting um, um paper by alan turing alan turing is a is a british that um somehow we can say is the father of modern ai and he has this classical paper that's where he asked the question can machine think you know can machine think Alan by Alan Turing? So many of if if you it's an interesting re read. I, I will I will actually advise you to just browse the paper. Can machine th think by Alan Turing? You know you find it very interesting to read. But this is the spoiler. Just in case you are going to read now, the spoiler is that suppose that we have um, we have a human being in one end of the room, and we have a machine. On the other hand of the room now we have somebody that we will call interrogator right if this person you know is isolated from the two people that means he cannot see the human being is talking to neither can he see the machine that is talking to so what alan turing is saying is that if this person is communicating with the two of them and at a point he can no longer differentiate whether he's talking to a human being or is talking to a machine that machine right is an intelligent machine i don't know whether i put the question i mean the illustration very very well for you right but um that is that is the that is the case you know maybe i should put it in another way that i am currently in mena and i'm speaking with you over the internet right i probably could not even see any one of your on any one of your face right and then I can ask you a question and you will reply me back, right? So I'm saying that if there is a, um, a software that we can call an AI software, and that software can give me the answer, just like any one of you who is human being can give me, then we can say that that system is a machine that can think. And so the whole of this setup is called imitator. That is a, a machine that can imitate human being. So... Now, um, that, that becomes the goal of AI developer at a point that we just want to develop a machine that can imitate human being or that can represent human being. So, for instance, you are running a business, right? And um, customers can come and ask you, what is the price of this, um, this item? What is the price of that item? Now, suppose that that business you are running is an online-based um system now the time that you are no longer around probably for any reason you go and pray you went to church or to mosque and um, it's a time that the person wants to also ask a question about the product you are selling now if i mean we can say that that the a software is an intelligent system if it can stand in place for you such that the customer did not even know that you are not the one that is answering it so um, the question you ask me is that, okay, in the development of AI right now, do we have a system that can do this? And the answer is yes. In fact, we, we have more, right? We have um, chatbots right now that can speak on behalf of business owner, on behalf of school, um, 
you know we can implement for you know it is possible to develop one for um for summit university like you have a question to ask your level advisor and the guy is not around currently you know an ai system can um can serve in place of that person and interrogate with you and ask all i mean answer all the questions that you want to ask all right so that is um at sheer intelligence you know so to achieve this you know um that is where different fields of at sheer intelligence now begin to come into play so we have natural language you know that's a field uh, I mean, an aspect of artificial neural. I mean, sorry, I'm saying artificial neural network. I want to say artificial intelligence. All right. So, as um, natural language processing, maybe many of you will have seen language translator, language understanding. You know, all of these are natural language processor. Then we also have knowledge representation. That is. Um, an AI system that can represent the knowledge or present the result for you in a way that is understandable. So, for instance, um, many of you will have probably heard of um, this um, data science, making different kind of visualization, right? Running diagnostic and all of that. You know, all of these are form of knowledge representation. So, we also have automated reasoning, you know. Is it possible for us to have a robot that can no, not only survive but also interact with other people? You know, I also talk about a chatbot that is able to interact with other people even when the owner is not around. Then we have machine learning, we have robotics, we have so many, many other um, kinds. Now, but I want to make a summary of this because I believe or I anticipate that at some point you're going to ask me. What is the difference between artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning? Because all these things seems like the buzzword currently, right? Now, um, basically, they are developmental phases, so to say, and they comprise of different activities that people focus on at different period of time. So, um, at the earliest earliest days of artificial intelligence, you know. The buzzword around is AI, AI, AI. A machine, a, uh, sorry, a, a, a machine that can behave exactly like human being, and they 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 encompass a whole lot of things, right? So it, 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 it talks about the cognitive. It talks about developing something like a brain and so many other things. But you know. Um, the goal looked like a far-fetched goal, and so people were like, okay, instead of going for all this biggest goal in the world what about if we begin to break it down so machine learning then come into um, people begin to develop what we call machine learning it focus on the algorithms that are i mean software algorithms right not just the entire um uh, intelligence uh, um, debate but rather algorithms that can serve as um intelligent systems right so um but then as time goes on we you know there are different kind i mean different algorithms on under machine learning you they, they they are so so many of them like every day new ones are coming up but then there is one of the algorithm that is called artificial neural network so artificial neural network give birth to deep learning because with artificial neural network we understand that each neurons are in segment and then you can make that neuron in segment which we call layer you can make the layer so many and when you make the layer so many then we call it a deep neural network and so the deep neural network is what gives birth to deep learning all right so that is um, the general overview okay so let's talk a little bit about this machine learning kind of thing by the way as i'm talking about machine learning you can begin to have in your mind that i'm also talking about um ai and i'm as well talking about deep learning all right so machine learning is making great stride because we have large and good data set a higher computing power and pro pro um, process algorithms so and we have so many applications of machine learning i'm also going to talk about it um currently so but um ai is not i mean machine learning is not completely ai rather it is an aspect 
just like you can see in this place i wish i can um, i have my marker to just show you just like you can see in this place we have machine learning as a subset of artificial intelligence all right so machine learning that we have supervised learning unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning so supervised learning for instance can uh, predict a numerical value i'm going to show you what that means and it can also do classification and we have unsupervised learning and so many other so this is an example now um if you look at this image sorry I'm, i want to see if um if i can just bring out sorry i wish i can bring out the okay good um, just give me a minute okay good now if you look at this this slide we have this picture it is in black and white right so it is an ai this system that transformed this black and white to this fine colored image and so different other kinds of images also old images are turned to new images colored image that are looking so 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 well and so good so this is an example of what an ai can do you know maybe your parent has this picture that they are, they are they have taken in the 80s or in the 1950s right so you can get the picture and turn it to a colored image okay then we have classification so um, right now we have um, system that can do object recognition so what we mean by object recognition is look at this image here now um, if i tell you to i mean if i ask you what is in the image you know you won't have any problem telling me what it is about right but a computer at some point have problem with it so we have an artificial intelligence system now that can recognize that from um, this image contain dog and then it can it can also give you an idea of where the dog is and then it also has a heart so you see art with a wide brim that's a description of what it is and then this is a dog so we have a tree intelligence system that can do that right now um, and in reinforcement learning we have um, a tree intelligence system that can play game those atari games that i don't know i, I believe you know about that so um, we have a tree intelligence that can play game and even beyond playing game now they are doing so many other fantastic stuff right then um, for unsupervised learning, we have clustering. So this 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 kind of thing can um, can be used to predict um, crime scenes in different locations. So this is an example now. All this circle is telling you where um, where crime is likely to happen. You know. So that is an example of what an AI system can do. Um, it, it also have application in different aspects of science. And like I said earlier, even in um, non-science fields, okay? So um, I also mentioned about autonomous vehicles. So you can see vehicles that are driving themselves, um, self-driving cars, right? So it is possible to have a system like that. Um, this is how, uh, okay, so, um, the autonomous vehicle actually work. There's a lot of things that that um, that it's comprised of. So we have um, we have adaptive vision, which means that whether it is in the day or in the night, this car must be able to see. We also have path planning, so it must be able to plan how it is going to to go. So this is the this is the representation of the car. I believe you can see my drawing, and then from here it is able to plan how it is going to go so it is in fact at a point you know some of the trajectory that is going to take it and derail you know some that is going to take it completely off the path is going and it also know the best ones that is supposed to follow so you can see so that is path planning then um when i started i talk about behavior you know, it must also learn from drivers to know the behavior of other drivers that are surrounding it. So this is an example. You have Stanley. Stanley is a driver just beside it at one hand, and Sebastian is another driver at the other hand. You know, it's, it's see the way the two of them are driving, and then for like knowing the way they drive, it's able to 
drive his boat because at the point where he, he, he swayed to this side and Sebastian is also swaying here, the two of them may collide. So it's learned also from different other um, different other things. Now, um, you see, machine learning is also machine learning, deep learning, AI, you know, I want to say all of them together. They are making waves and they are making news. I believe that is not new to you as well. Now, um, many other things that we can talk about is recognition and that um, AI system is able to recognize objects in parts. So for instance, at this part, you can see that um, what the AI system is recognizing is very simple. It's just looking like black and white but we call it edges so it's recognizing edges that is in this um, final image right so at this intermediate point it is able to recognize in this place you see it can recognize the nose in this part it can recognize the eyes in this part it can recognize the mouth and the nose right so different other places you know this is recognizing eyes and the eyebrow and all of that. So eventually it's able to group all of these things together to form a real face and in fact, to recognize the person. So what can it do with this? It can do more, you know, it is possible to recognize an occluded face. That's a face that is blocked, right? And reconstruct the entire face. So you can see this is, this is the input image. It is blocked, like half of it can be seen, but the final image, you see, a perfect, um, almost perfect image of the person is is recognized, like is drawn, is completed, right? So that is um, that's an example. Also, we have seen description. So um, just like human being can stand in this in the street and describe everything you can see on that scene, right? It is also possible right now through deep learning, through AI systems, to describe fully what is in the street so you can see the road is recognized and described cars you know are well recognized you know the window the balcony you know the building everything is is recognized including people that are walking around in the in the building right so all of them are well and they are recognized okay so um beyond that um AI is also using for automatic speech recognition, even more than automatic speech recognition right now. We know that they can even talk um, and that's, uh, yeah. So many of you have probably used Google, right? Many of you have used Google, you have used Alexa, you have used um, Siri. All of these are AI systems that are in speech technology, you know, so you can tell Alexa to probably play your best music or tell Siri to call a number for you or tell Google to help you add an event to the calendar. So all of these are at share intelligence in practice. Okay, so um, we, like I said earlier, we have so many um, algorithms when you come to, when you come to, when you come to machine learning. So these are some of the, um, the example of algorithms. So if you want to do regression, these are so many other algorithms that you can think about, but I don't want to go in depth into all of this today. So for those that want to uh, be a developer, like um, you want to also develop or contribute to the um, AI systems, right? You want to build a system, a, maybe a robot, maybe an algorithm, maybe a software that is AI-based system. So this is a good time for you you're just entering the university so you can focus your attention and all of your energy in this and you know before you graduate you will have developed maybe a robot or anything that you are, that you wanted to to develop all right so to do that you know these are some of the things that you you really want to get um you want to get your hands on so um first off the programming language that you want to choose the best programming language for it of course for so many reasons, Python is the best programming language that you can begin to learn. Um, it has a very steep learning curve, so you can pick it within a month. You are you are already okay with um, with the programming language. And so, um, one of the reasons why we even um, recommend Python for people is because it has so many libraries, and um, some of these libraries are even 
targeted towards some um, some aspect of AI already. So, excuse me. So, for instance, we have Scikit-Learn. Scikit-Learn is completely focusing um, classical machine learning algorithm. And then we have PyTorch, TensorFlow, Keras. All of them are um, deep learning frameworks. So, when we say framework, what what do we mean? You know, um, normally you're supposed to sit down and write all the codes that you need from A to Z, but um, there are some um, frequently used codes, frequently frequently used modules and functions and libraries, you know. So all of those ones are the ones that's packed together and it's called framework so that when you want to develop, you don't need to worry yourself about so many other things, you just focus on um, what you want to develop a functionality that you want to build and just go ahead straight forward and develop it okay um yeah these are so many other things that um that you i don't think i need to go into all right so if you want to again go into um um yeah full the full pipeline of developing uh, an ai system of course this focusing more on data you you think about the data injection where do you want to get your data from and all of that and how do you want to clean it how do you want to handle outliers missing value and all of that and then transformation before you now pick which algorithm you want to use to do that all right so i want to stop here because my i think i mean my 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 goal is to one introduce you to ai generally and tell you what you can I mean what it has been doing but i don't want to stop there i want to also show you that it is possible for you to um, before you graduate from the university to develop your own intelligent system and um to show you the way to do that all right so um i don't know if any one of you have questions for me right now i um thank you very much for listening and being part of the class okay ah thank you very much engineer Yinka. Adit Digba, he has been able to uh, give us a basic introduction to artificial intelligence. And uh, um, I don't know if anybody wants to ask Engineer Yinka Adit Digba any question from the audience. Please do not forget that this session is recorded and you can rewatch it on our YouTube channel. Okay, someone is saying, how do we join the AI community on campus, please? Um, I, I think um, the last speaker, um, she talked about how you can obtain a form in our office. Uh, when you're on campus, please, you, if you can't see me, I would make sure that you get. But once you get on campus, you ask of um, Ghania Afolabi Yusuf. Uh, she is the um, coordinator for the AI um, club. So any other questions? Any other questions for Engineer Inka? Um, I did digba um, basic introduction to artificial intelligence. I hope that you have been able to um, get a more. Um, okay, Abibat wants to ask a question. Okay, Abibat, you raise up your hand. Okay. Um, okay, so I hope that you have um, you now um, have a deeper. Um, understanding of what artificial intelligence is, what it does, and how you also can fit into um, this uh, contemporary knowledge in our societies. Uh, we at Summit University, we pride ourselves as a university um, that is in line with Industry 4.0. Uh, we are also into artificial intelligence. It's one of the seven skills that you would be learning when you come here at Summit University. Don't forget that we've talked about, um, in, in the course of this orientation program, we've shown you about um, four skills, uh, financial literacy, um, clean and renewable energy. Um, this is artificial intelligence. We also had Islam and global citizen skills and the likes. We also have history, heritage and storytelling. We have academic uh, which uh, things should hold on Thursday. Um, so, if, if there's any questions, please, you can ask our speaker before um, he takes his leave. We want to say a very big thank you to Engineer Inka, Ade Inka, Ade Digba for joining us on such a short notice. Uh, we really do appreciate um, your time uh, with us today. 
Um, he is a friend of the university, and like I said, he's a senior visiting scholar here at Summit University of. Uh, we really do appreciate your presence here today. I want to say a very big thank you to you for um, coming um, to speak with us today. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. So um, we've had uh, three speakers for today. We've had uh, Mr. Um, um, we've had Mrs. Ghania Afolabi, who has spoken to us on um, the summit um, AI community, the AI community here at Summit University. We've also had Mr. Olari Waju Onyebuke, who has spoken to us about smart technology in Nigeria. Um, Mr. Olari Waju Onyebuke works with Microsoft. And very soon, I think we can boldly say that we'll be having um, an agreement with Microsoft here, especially for those of you in the Department of Computer Science. Uh, you will be taught by the best and from the best, uh, from one of the best companies in the world. And also, just recently, we had engineer Adeyinka Adedigba from the Federal University of Technology, MENA. He's also a senior visiting scholar here at Summit University of Africa. So um, that's, that brings us to the end of our, our wrap today. But before, let's let's have a quick chat. Uh, who wants to talk to me? Um, Abibat Afolayo, Amina Staiwo, uh, if you want to talk to me, um, let me just, uh, let me see how you are doing. So you also see how I'm doing. And um, if you have any questions, any comments, um, any clarifications that you want to ask me, or if you want to also ask how I'm doing, um, okay, I'm waiting to speak with just one or two people. Uh, it's almost 12 o'clock, so we can round up and uh, move to other apps. Don't forget that you're also expected to have started to take your um, courses or your classes on clean and renewable energy on the university website, visit www.summituniversity.edu.ng, and you would be able to um, get where to take your classes from there. So I'm still waiting. I don't want to call names. I don't want to call names. If you want to talk to me, um, let's just have a quick chat before we leave today. Mm. Um, OK, I'm still waiting. In the absence, please don't forget. Um, OK, Kendi Latifa. Okay, please unmute your microphone. Walikus Salam how are you doing today? Fine, sir. I want to ask about the renewable energy. I'm not able okay. to go, I'm not able to start module one, sir. For the clean and renewable energy? Yes, sir. Okay, I would uh, have my, um, the university ICT team look into that and I will give, are you on the WhatsApp group? Yes, I am. Okay, I'll have the ICT team look into it. And what's what exactly is the challenge? You, you cannot go past the first module. Yes, sir, I can't. Okay, I'll have. Huh? Did you select Summit University as your university of affiliation? I'm just getting words from the ICT team. Did you get, no, did you pick some university? Oh, you would have to pick some university as your university of affiliation so that you can uh, go be able to go skip, scale through to the um, second module. But I'll still have okay. more from the ICT yes, team. I I'll still have okay. more from the ICT team. Um, okay. okay. Who else wants to talk to me? Oh, oh, you only just wanted to ask a question and not to talk to me. Oh, that's also very good. Yeah. Um, any, I mean, I'm looking for someone that wants to talk to me, Ojari wants to talk to me, um, ask me any other questions. If it's questions you have, it's also very fine. Um, but I just want to see how you are doing, what your preparations are like for resumption, and um, if you have any difficulties, you can also uh, let me know. Um, if you cannot ask yet, you can also always text me on WhatsApp. Um, all of us are so we are accessible. You know, it's like we are here for you. And truly, truly, we are here for you. So you can always reach us. Um, offices are always opened um, most times. I don't want to preempt and say every time, but I mean, you can always find people accessible. And the old community generally is is um, uh, within reach. And yeah, it's a family. Like I said, it's a family. We treat ourselves like family. Somebody's asking for my name here. 
My name is Ibrahim Salahu from the Department of Political Science, Summit University offer. Um, of course, I would have still mentioned my name at the end of the program, but yeah. So anybody who wants to ask any question, I would also be sending you um, several links um, to help to ease your um, um, stay or your um, coming into the university campus. I'll be sharing a lot of links. I hope that you saw the YouTube video that I sent to you um, of one of our students. She she was in 100 level at that time. Now she's in 200 level. Um, so those of you in mass come, you have a lot of excitement to come. Uh, stage plays, stage dramas, advertisements, assignments, recordings, and the likes. Those of you in computer science, you have cyber security, you have data science, you have artificial intelligence, machine learning, and the likes. Those of you in political science with, uh, with me, uh, you have um, debates, you have presentations, you have um, roundtable discussions, you have research work. So we'll be talking about your research groups tomorrow, some of the research groups that we have here tomorrow, and yeah, we'll be looking at areas of research interest. You know, as you as you come into the university, you know, from your first year, you you should be having there should be at least an area that interests you that you would want to work on as you as time progresses for your undergraduate and even for those of you who want to advance to postgraduate. Don't forget that I here at Summit University. If we want, we are training students in line with Industry 4.0. We are training you to be able to compete with people across the world. So, if we do not train you um, according to um, for you to compete, it's our joy for you to compete with other other um, students across the world. Because if you if you win, then it's also a win for Summit University, and if you also win, uh, it's also a win for you. So. It's a symbiotic relationship, and the vice chancellor will be telling you how you can become uh, our brand ambassador on the Friday in the closing ceremony uh, for this orientation program. So, um, in the absence of no question, nobody wants to talk to me today. It's okay, no problem. I will take it in good faith. Um, so, in the absence of no um, question, comments, um, I want to say a very big thank you to you for joining us today. Um, tomorrow we'll be looking at um, research groups here at Summit University, and on Thursday we'll be looking at, Thursday is a dedicated day for um, the College of Management and Social Sciences, and War Friday is more of um, a closing ceremony and library bursary and the likes. So tomorrow is um, Research and Innovation Day at Summit University. I want you to know what our research interests are. And I can, of course, assure you that artificial intelligence is one area that we are really looking to key into here at Summit University of Uh So we have the coordinator for the research group. Uh, she'll be joining us in the studios um, tomorrow. Um, we also have the um, coordinator of you know, a research group from Comas and also from Conas, they'll be coming here to tell you their research interests and how they want you um, to fit into their research interests. And please don't forget that I want uh, tomorrow, I want you to ask them a lot of questions because they are really coming to pitch to you. And I want you to bombard them with a lot of questions, you know, get it. I hope that you've all had a pen and paper all through this orientation program. If not, you can always rewatch um, these um, videos on our YouTube channel. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook, um, Twitter, YouTube, um, LinkedIn, Instagram, and also on TikTok and to catch um, up with us on the latest updates here at Summit University of Ar um, So in the absence of no further questions, I want to say it's been nice to talk to all of you today. And I want to wish you a great day and we'll see you tomorrow from me and my team here at Summit University of Ar I want to say Bye bye, and we'll see you tomorrow. My name is Ibrahim Salau, and it's a wrap. Thank you very much.